Good morning, one and all. Yeah, um, hello. <laughs> we had a bit of a problem with the stream this morning, so that's why I'm having to uh, to upload this. It just seems to be strange. We have these um, these sort of up and down days. I think it's probably to do with the amount of people who are um, getting online, doing doing work and stuff. Seems to be later on in the week. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, the internet seems to always be a little bit like that because it has to be really good to be able to get consistent stuff like this. But then other days, it's completely fine. So I don't know. So welcome to Mr. Businessman. Um, it is a Thursday. The reason I mentioned that it's the th a Thursday um, is so that you can keep track of what day it is. Uh, again, for people in the future, welcome. It's not Thursday necessarily for you. Um, and I just wanted to mention the fact that at this moment in time, for those of you uh, who are joining me live and those of you uh, sort of following me as we go, um, the uh, we are sort of jumping around the spec a little bit. And the reason I'm jumping around the spec a little bit, not not massively, but I am, um, is the fact that uh, it, it's it, some things lend themselves better to um, on-screen stuff just just directly. Uh, being slapped up onto the screen than other things do so things like your uh, economic stuff like your break-even charts uh, and your supply and demand things and like that um it's just a little bit harder to to just throw it up and and start um you know immediately teaching it uh, rather than some things like this that that you can kind of picture a little bit easier in your mind and um, so that's why i'm doing these i am going to come back to them so don't worry if you are hankering for some kind of uh, economic um or economics uh, revision um then don't worry we will cover it uh, in the next couple of lessons it's just uh, i think i'm going to get my ipad and i'll draw on it while we're on on live or something like that um i just need to check that out and see how it works i think it'll work i'm pretty sure it will um so don't worry about it anyway we're going to get to it so we're going to get straight into today anyway we're going to be doing uh, methods of production um and uh so apologies to those of you who uh <laughs> who have already uh sort of done a bit of this lesson this morning but uh you know uh, it's all revision in it it's all revision so uh, producing goods and services methods of production so the first thing we need to talk about uh, when we're talking about um about this kind of stuff is what what's physically happening so we're talking about production uh, production's a really important thing for businesses to understand and to plan a lot of businesses don't do the necessary planning before production and people's um de there are whole departments and, and especially specific people's jobs that are, are just about um sort of uh, planning production scales and production um, timings and things like that. Um, so it, it is it is a big thing and it is something that's uh, very important to businesses and, and, uh, and, and stakeholders and things like that. To get it wrong can be extremely expensive for businesses. So let's have a look at what, what they actually want us to do. So there's two learning objectives. Learning objective one is explain job batch and flow methods of production. And then we've got um, learning objective two, evaluate appropriate methods of production for businesses. So two different things. The first one is all about these job batch and flow. Now, if you've not done job batch and flow before, they are one of those really useful uh, business terms that um, one thing I really liked about business when I was at college and when I was at school was the fact that uh, I felt like it was common sense, a lot of the stuff. They use words that don't um, confuse you. And now, after I, after I studied business more, I found that that isn't always the case, and they do come up with some nonsense words and things like that that you think, well, that doesn't seem to, to make sense. But um, this is a good example of a time when it does make sense. So job, batch, and flow methods. Um, if you get into that exam and think, oh, I can't remember what these are, think about what the words are saying, job, production, what could job production mean? Could, what could batch production mean? What could flow production mean? If something flows, what does that mean? If something's in a, a batch, what does that mean? If something is a job, hmm, what, what could that mean? Um, and then learning objective two, evaluate the appropriate methods of production for businesses. So it's all about the um, sort of the higher level things that we always talk about, isn't it? The AO3, AO4 kind of thing of um, what's the most appropriate for this size of business, this age of business, this type of business that, you know, is well established, not well established, has market dominance, doesn't have much market dominance, whatever it is that we're doing. Um the the it's quite significant, isn't it? Okay. So let's have a look. Now um this is uh the the first section of it that we talk about job batch and flow. And we're gonna go into more detail about these, but can you remember if this is revision for you, if this isn't the first time you've done it, can you remember what these three are? Um, a method by which goods and services are produced. We're talking more about your goods rather than your services. It's difficult to, to really say that you produce services in the same way. If we talk about services like, uh, you know, insurance brokering or things like that. 
it would pretty much all be job production you know if you were to talk about you know ha individual you know sort of one-to-one -one customized personal customer service um so we, we make it easy on yourself think about it from a from a uh, sort of just product production um point of view that's easier for, for you to to just consider uh, and then we've got the batch production then we've got the floor production so let's let's get into it and let's have a little look at each one of them before we start though um we've got to have a look at these so there's a couple of decisions that we have to make and, and this is what i was saying about uh businesses not spending the time um actually um you know adequately making these decisions so we've got um things like what production method will be used? We've got our job flow or batch. What factors of production will be used? Now, when we say factors of production, that's the the sort of external and ex and internal factors which will affect what we are physically doing. So, is it a massively capital intensive thing? Is it a massive labour intensive thing? How physically are we going to do it? Is it a mass production thing? Is it a niche production? Um, are we going to have to produce them very quickly? Are we going to have to use a lot of space? Are we going to have to store them? Um, there's there's a load of, of questions. So basically, when you're talking about what production factors or, um, or factors of production we're going to be thinking about, we've got to be thinking about things like that, basically. So it's, it's yes, okay, we could say we could do them in job, we could do them in batch, we could do them in floor, but what about the other things um, that we have to think about, about our ability to actually physically produce things, our ability to store things, our ability to ensure things, um, whatever it is that we're, that we're actually physically trying to do. There's all that, and it's, it's not to be forgotten about at the same time as well isn't it and finally how will these factors of production be combined you know so you know are we going to um, do a mass production thing that we store all the things and then we do a global release so are we going to you know do a mass production thing where we just have certain things what about your distribution how are we going to do that what about um you know production are we going to do production in one place in the country or are we going to do it around uh, various places so there's lots of questions that need to be answered uh, and I'm being healthy today because I've got some uh, orange juice rather than uh, Pepsi. <sighs> nice little Xbox cup there. Look, green one. It's nice, that, isn't it? Mm. And, um, yeah, so let, let's go, go in a bit more. So, first of all, let's have a little look at job production. So, what is job production? So, job production is a method of production which involves employing all factors uh, to complete one unit of output at a time. Characteristics include single unit or rather single items, tailor-made to the buyer's specifications, highly skilled employees, goods can take a very long time to make, and uh, high prices. Now, uh, there is an example on here, and it is an example that is all about um, thinking, but I might might be able to put this in i'm not sure usually i just stick them in the stick them in the description so i might just stick to that because uh, there's a, it's, it's a lot of messing around to try and get them in so i'll, I'll probably just stick them in the, the description for you to have a look at but basically there's a video here of an example of a of a uh, of a a single unit being created to uh, customer specification so when we're talking about job production we're talking all about um you know the one-off thing so wedding dresses would be a brilliant example now wedding dresses can be custom made and they are custom made a lot of the time for their individual people because lots of brides don't want uh, an off-the-shelf you know um thing and a lot of people will import them from foreign countries and things like that and you get these brilliant um you know horror stories don't you online of people uh ordering a um a wedding dress from china and when it arrives it's three sizes too small or it's really bad quality or something like that so you've got to be aware of what you're buying but ultimately for this one we don't just want to think about that we want to think about lots of other things like that like you can have um job production on things like cars like if you have an extremely luxurious cars things like morgan uh cars i don't know if you've heard of them before but we talked about them in class um they were on an exam a couple of months a couple of years ago and, they, and morgan cars um are like one-off built uh cars i'm gonna see actually i might be able to show you one let me just see morgan car company show you what they look like yeah these are um that's a morgan car so as you can see, very, very niche, very, very specific, um, made to order, you know, um, very, very, you know, um, specific. And, and these people, 
Look, look at that. You can tell they're customized, aren't they? They've got a certain look to them, but they are extremely niche. They're not the kind of thing that you're going to be able to buy off the cuff. They're not the kind of thing you're going to have to wear for these things. These things are being produced um, very, very specifically for the for the for the sort of wants and needs of that consumer so yeah that that's morgan uh really really nice looking cars like they're really classic looking cars as well and uh you know unusual so uh, lots of people really like them and they are job produced because as i said they're, they're very very specific to, to what you're looking for and um, i think delorean did them as well recently where they would make a custom delorean to you if you remember the delorean it's the car from back to the future um and the delorean car company went under um very very shortly after back to the future came out um and it was very difficult for them to source the cars for the movie but um yeah the 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 company itself has re-emerged sort of years and years later because of the nostalgia factor from that movie and people still want to get hold of one not because they were particularly into the the company itself but because it was on back to the future uh, now they're thinking um oh well we'll custom make them for people but it's really really expensive to get them made and then you can tell them you know what kind of stereo do you want what kind of leather seats do you want what kind of this what kind of that so you can really really be specific about what it is another brilliant one um for this one is uh the interesting things about these as well is is the fact that with with job production you can get exactly what you want at that certain time you can go to these people and you'll be surprised how expensive it is i remember going to um a tailor who was making custom suits and i wanted a certain jacket made um and it, and it was like you know more than a thousand pounds for a jacket to be made because um you had to get the you know the tailor had to take his time to do it you know you've got the um the things and i think you know like the, the other things that they have to do um but i think the the fact that we have such cheap clothing in this country it means that we we have a complete disconnect from the real how much it actually costs to make customized products to make custom clothing it's not cheap and it shouldn't be as cheap as it is to to actually produce um most of our clothing it should be significantly more expensive the reason it isn't is because we use massive um you know uh, economies of scale isn't it and and buying lots of uh, products and things from overseas where they don't necessarily have uh, particularly good working conditions or minimum wage and things like that and whilst we have the ability to do that and it might be good for us um you know to get a cheap product it is a bit worrying when you actually look into this because you think well that's not cheap but a brilliant idea as I said if you want to get a customized product um what about some advantages and disadvantages then uh, if my uh, cursor will come back onto the screen um so advantages we can cater for specific customized uh, and customer needs um, we want to be really, really specific with this and, and get, get just what you want. Uh, motivated workforce. You're always going to have a really motivated workforce in these kind of industries. Things like um, these uh, Harley Davidson and things like that, you know, where we're making customized stuff because they are proud of what they do. They're very, very skilled people. They're not just people who are, you know, sticking chocolates in a box or whatever. Anybody could do it. They are people who are artists in their industry, you know, and we're talking about, but you know, tattoo artists and things like that would be a good example of another job um production thing wouldn't it they are very very passionate about what they do and it, and it goes off their skill and ability um simple simple to coordinate you can you know you just do one um one sort of thing at a time you know you're not going to be working on 10 projects at a time you'll be working on one at a time trying to get things done um good examples of these as well as you know like pimp my ride and i think there was other ones isn't there what what the west coast customs and stuff like that on there uh, what is it pick tv or dave or whatever it discovery shed um where they are uh taking old cars and redoing them that they're always job production they wouldn't do more than one of them at a time um can charge higher prices now one of the things that was brought up um in the exam with this one was uh, higher prices wasn't necessarily a, a factor of job production it wasn't something which they said um you know they have to charge they have to charge higher prices but saying that they do charge higher prices is is reasonable but they, it's just not always a, a guarantee that they have to but it's likely to be that they'll be much more expensive disadvantage production costs are high labor intensive stuff we've got to pay these people uh 
a real premium wage a lot of the time because um because of who they are and because the, the, the you know they're experts and things like that you're going to pay for a premium because of who they are and what they can do expensive use of machines um tools lying idle that means that we've because we're only doing one thing at a time because we're not able to use we're not using the machines to capacity we're using them very very little we're only using them when we need them so it's not like you know we can have the machine pumping stuff out 24 7 uh, which would be good if we could because the um we would be getting more out of them wouldn't we we would be getting our capacity filled better with this one we only have um, a certain amount you know available and then we've got lead times can be lengthy the amount of time that we're actually spending on the thing the amount of time that we've actually got to um you know spend on it and and uh, get it from when we order it to when it does it takes as long as it takes really with these and selling costs are high especially sales team so you need to go out and actually sell these to individual people it's not easy to get someone to buy a morgan car i mean in terms of that they have their reputation that will go for them they don't need to go out and try and get sales now necessarily because they're so well thought of in that industry um, but with uh, other companies, if you're doing something niche, you need to go out and try and sell that product to people. And it's not easy because, you know, if you're a tattooist, how many people want tattoos? You know, it's still a niche market. There isn't millions and millions of people uh, who are all desperate for tattoos. And, there's you know, it's quite a saturated market as well. So you're going to have to go out and try and get drum up some business, aren't you? Second one's batch production. Um, batch production, a limited number of identical goods are produced in sets or batches and then using the same equipment and labour, batches of different goods are made. One batch will be finished before the next is, is uh, started. So characteristics, produce a large number of items, semi-skilled, produce standardised items that may vary each batch. Okay, so with this one, you might be talking about things like uh, chocolate, you know, where you're making different types of things. Like, you know, um, if they're making Skittles, they'll make a certain amount of blue Skittles. Do they do blue Skittles? Uh, a certain one of yellow Skittles, a certain one of red Skittles, a certain one of green Skittles or whatever. They won't just continually make red Skittles. They'll make a certain batch of them, certain then, and then add them together. Um, but for things like, um, you know, individual products that might be made in batches, if you think about the, some people really use it to their advantage, this, the fact that it's a batch, so there is only a certain amount of these. So if you think about your luxury brands, um, things like Gucci and things like, uh, well, I'm not really into my, my luxury brands, but, um, I know that, I know there's a lot of, uh, online, um, clothing manufacturers or shoes and things like that nike do it uh, when they will make a certain amount of the certain type of shoe and release the batch and then that's it so people are adamant they've got to get on the website they've got to you know snap them up as soon as they can uh, what was it yesterday i was watching that someone said that oh yeah i think it was um i think it was uh, nintendo was saying that they'd uh because Nintendo do batches of um, games consoles and things like that. They don't just continually make them um, because they, they sell them. You know, they, they make they make a batch, get it out, sell it, um, and then they'll make a certain amount just so that they don't overdo the capacity. It'd be better if they did floor production, if really, because they'd, it'd be better if they could just keep getting stuff out. But they're very sensible about how, how much they get out and how much they, you know, they store of the, um, the market of products sometimes just to sort of simulate growth and things like that. But it's uh, it does work for them. So one of the things people were saying online the other day was that they're really struggling to get a Nintendo Switch at the minute. And as soon as they go online, as soon as a batch comes in, uh, they're immediately sold out. And that's probably because of the lockdown and people want to have access to games and things like that. But by the same thing, um, it is something that, that you know, companies do on purpose. Um Nintendo are a really good example of a business that do that thing on purpose. They do they do that to um, to stimulate growth and stimulate the market a little bit. Um, hence why when you when you try and buy these consoles at release, you can't get them. Not because they don't have the capacity to do them, because they could have done if they want to. But a lot of the time, it's to actively try and you know make you want this more because there's only a certain amount actually released at a time. So why is it semi-skilled? Well, this one, it doesn't require people to be as skilled. Semi-skilled is better because there might be some some skill involved where you've got to, you know, design, you know, like physically put something together or whatever on the production. Um, but it's not going to be as skilled as a uh, job production where everything's customized. So you don't need as, as skilled people. So it's not, it's going to be slightly cheaper to do. Um, but it obviously, and you can change little bits on it as well. So you could have batch one that has, you know, say you're doing chocolate, you could have batch one that looks like a little, um, you know, bunny. Then you could have one that looked like a little egg, essentially the same product, but a slightly different design. Um, 
Advantages and disadvantages of these, though, we've got some flexibility, so some changes can be made. Remember, on uh, job production, complete flexibility. You can do whatever you want with it, we, you know, within reason. Um, and the reason, and I say within reason, because there will be certain other things that will be restricting the complete freedom to do things, other production factors, such as our ability to access capital and things like that, and the amount of time that we're going to spend on it and things like that, you know. Um, but if you add unlimited funds, unlimited resources to use, then ultimately job production will be completely free of, uh, of you know, creative issues. And on batch production, we've got less of that, but but still some. Um, we've got less specialised, um, requiring less skill. We just talked about that. Lower cost per unit slightly uh, because we're creating a few of these. So that means that we can, you know, we can uh, divvy up the um, variable cost per unit on, you know, energy used in a machine or, you know, uh, depreciation or whatever it is that we're using. But it's going to be slightly cheaper to do it. Uh, more standard machinery can be used rather than really, really specific stuff. And we can swap stuff out on them and, and you know, get used to them. Uh, disadvantages though careful planning needs all workers and machines will uh, be idle yeah fair play well what happens when we finish the batch what happens when we're um you know between uh, batches well we're gonna have to come up with something aren't we we don't really want that to happen we want another batch to be coming through so that people uh, do have things to do then we've got machinery may be more complex as workers have less skill um yeah, it could be. We could have to make our um, machinery a little bit more complex, a little bit more forward thinking. We might have to in include some kind of AI things now uh, to be able to take over some stuff because we've got less skilled workers. We haven't got the ability to just rely on them completely. If batches are kept small, costs can be kept high. can be very expensive to do. Remember, we can benefit from that because potentially we could put the prices up. We can make it more wanted. But remember, Everybody making in batch production isn't Gucci. Everybody isn't Nike. Everybody doesn't have the ability or the reputation to be able to demand money. Uh, money is tied up in work in progress, and we've got high stock level with these kind of stuff. Imagine if you did a small batch of a thousand units uh, of something, a uh, thousand pair of Nike shoes, then that's that's a lot of money to be tied up in things. Not for Nike. I mean, it's not a massive deal for them, but uh, any other person would be. It'd be massive, wouldn't it? Um, so, in an exam situation, you might get something like this. Briefly explain with the use of an example the process of batch production. Um, so, this is what they're looking for. They've got one, uh, sorry, two AO1 and one AO2 with the use of an example. The manufacturer of a limited number of identical products. Uh, within each stage of the production process, work will be completed um, for the whole batch before the next stage has begun. Suitable example, production of loaves of bread. You know, whatever. N yeah, Nike shoes would be a good one. You know, um what else did we have? Any anything which is which is, which is in batches, really cakes, um, yeah, chocolates, something like that would be completely fine. And there is a video to go along with it on the previous one. I'll link it in the in the description. Okay. And the final one that we've got is floor production. Now, floor production is a very large scale production of a standardized product uh, where each operation of a unit is performed uh, continuously, one after another, usually on a production line. Now, production lines are very, very good because they keep our costs down to an extent. And when I say cost, they're not like the, these are the, probably the, well, most obviously they're, they are the most expensive way to produce products, but simultaneously they are the cheapest per unit to do. So these are very, very expensive ways to produce things. Floor production is extremely expensive. You've got to have the, the working capital to be able to do it. To be able to, if you if you have a look on there, look at how many bottles just uh, surrounding that lady there. Hell of a lot of things tied up in, you know, tops in terms of the top of the bottle, the um, the actual plastic that makes the bottle, the the actual goods that go inside the bottle, the um, the paper that goes around the sides. Um, a hell of a lot of stuff that's tied up in that. And uh, and that's just on that picture, and that will go. That will probably be twenty four hours a day in that bottle because that's Coca Cola, and that's what they do. So in terms of that, it will be extremely expensive to to run that business and to run that production facility. But simultaneously, per product, it's going to minimise um, the cost per product because we're able to say, oh, well, actually, um, you know, we're using these these people, we're using them to capacity. She's not going to be stood around at any time, not doing anything. She's going to be having to put bottle tops on or whatever it is that do. Um, to to maximize the the sort of uh, workload and things that we're getting out of her. So characteristics: high production volume, uh, a simplified or standardized product. Remember, you can't get loads of customized versions of Coca Cola. You have you know a, a, a range of Coca Colas that they might produce. Uh, it's more likely that they produce them in batches. It's more likely that they produce uh, Coca Cola orange or whatever in batches. They won't uh, produce that on a um, on a floor. 
um, production thing because it would be um, more specific that they'd have to do it and that's not how the, the things are produced. So they can do that. Remember that as well. They can... Um, they can they can change they can do multiple types of production in the same um same company if they want if you remember back to called call recently they definitely did some batch production when they did um uh, the uh, marketing campaign you know the one with the different names on the bottle they would have been in batches they're not going to floor production that are they so they're going to it would have been a weird combination it would have been a, a floor production sort of thing to, to actually get the bottles and the pop out but it would have been a batch production to be able to produce those um those things and there is a video of that somewhere i'll see if i can link that as well uh, but have a look at those that we've got um two two examples down the bottom hot dogs uh, how they physically make those and vionetta vionetta comes out in this big long line of things so like a big vionetta and they cut it up or <laughs> so it actually starts an absolutely huge vionetta um and it continuously does that so it's they're quite cool these videos but have a little look at them advantages Unit costs are, uh, are reduced, like we said, because we are not letting, um, we're not leaving things idle. We're taking every opportunity to make things that we can. Um, we're taking every opportunity to provide, um, well, to 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 use the use the products. Sorry, use the production facilities to the to the to the maximum. Whether it's human capital in terms of actual people that we're, we're making sure that they're not just stood around, or if it's physical machinery, we can get them to do it as well, can't we? We can make sure that they're physically doing things 24 hours a day if they're available to reduce need for labor because we've got a lot of auto, uh, automated stuff we've got a lot of machinery that's able to do the stuff for us because um we will actively try and reduce the amount of labor that's involved with this as well because remember if we can automate it then it's going to be a hell of a lot more efficient more consistent consistency and quality of output can be assured um because we do um quality assurance quality uh testing consistently with it but also if we set it up right once then it'll be right won't it because we we, we sort of limit the amount of customization there's no customization uh, available in this people shouldn't be messing with it so unless there is other factors at play that are trying to physically stop this or so there is an issue or a mistake or an accident then realistically you should be able to set this up once and it, it'd be good to go and production can continue non-stop because a lot of these is done machinery so so we 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 try to minimize the amount of people that are involved more people involved with actually maintaining the machinery in this than actually physically involved with the the production itself obviously that will depend on the type of product it is and the the size of the business but if we're looking at someone like coca-cola when we're actually producing coca-cola the vast majority of that production line will be done by automated machinery uh and then there might be some people at the end to make sure that you know quality is uh maintained and excuse me things like that disadvantages setup costs are high because it's very very expensive to get all this machinery done very expensive to be doing it on this scale very very uh expensive to be producing products on this scale as well standardized products because if we didn't we wouldn't be able to physically manage this would we, we wouldn't be able to do anything with customized products with this we wouldn't be able to use this technique on customized products it doesn't make sense uh, poor motivation because it's it's very easy work you you can be com replaced very easily you're probably re going to be replaced by a computer very quickly if you if you're not already um but it's not i mean it's not going to give you much work of satisfaction that is it to be actually going to work and pretend you know you're just a cog in a machine you're just producing you're just putting bottle tops on something you know it's not something that you're oh yeah when i was at school i really wanted to be a person who put bottle tops on something it's not uh, it's not most people's dreams is it whereas um if we look at the job and batch at least those people can take a little bit more pride in the work um because there is direct in, you know they're directly involved with the actual production process um and breakdowns are costly because and we don't mean mental breakdowns uh, they're probably not that costly in this regard because you can actually replace the people but uh, breakdowns are costly because uh, it stops production so you know it will cost you a hell of a lot of money in terms of it could be millions if for, for the amount of time that you you stop if you have to stop production for half a day it might be half a million bottles of, of coca-cola that you don't produce and in which case if you don't produce them then you can't ship them if you don't ship them you can't get them out to to, uh, to businesses to sell okay um, so a couple of things on here uh, that you can use. So one-off production. Um, these are just basically the, uh, the 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 different things that 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 sort of go into these. These are the the, the factors. Um, so if we have a look at them, so job, batch, and flow. That it goes from really specific on the left to um, really um, you know just uh, really really broad in the sense that you know really customized to 
to really not customized on the right. So we've got one-off production and then it gets less to continuous production on the right. We've got can produce tailor-made products and then we've got on the right, we've got the economies of scale involved in mass production. We've got uh, suitable for niche marketing, suitable for mass marketing, needs a wide range of machines and skills to meet the requirements of each job, needs one set of machines to produce the standardized, highly flexible, inflexible, often labor intensive, capital intensive. Can you see how it works? And the middle one is somewhere in between. So if you need sort of like a, I know like people like to sometimes write these down as like a, you know, a cheat sheet basically of, of what the three things involve, but that's your AO3, that's your AO4 basically. When we're asking you to um, to evaluate the situation, they're the, they're the th kind of things that you're going to be talking about. So let's do a little test together, shall we? Let's do a little test. So limited startup capital, uh, we'd say job production. Why would that be? Okay, so I'm just going to give you a second. Pause the stream, pause the uh, pause the video for a second. Have a look through these. See if you can get me an answer, and I'll wait, and then we'll go through them a second. Okay. I've hurt my neck, by the way. I think I slept funny. <sighs> right. Okay. Um, I'll assume you're back. So, limited startup capital, why have we got it? Well, essentially, if we've got limited startup capital, job production might not be a bad idea because we're not going to have the amount of money that we're going to need to be able to mass produce things, are we? We're not going to have the money to be able to be capital intensive in terms of, you know, buy those machineries and things like that. So, limited startup capital, doing one-off stuff for individuals that is relying on the skill of you, you might have the ability, you might already have the gear to be able to do things like that, job production-wise. So, that's not a bad idea. Uh, niche market, job or batch, why would that be? Well, if it's a niche market, there's no point in doing floor production because we're going to have way too much capacity. We're going to be producing products for a market that, that isn't, hasn't got the, the sort of uh, capacity in the market to actually satisfy. There's no demand to, um, to satisfy that, that, so there's no point of doing floor production. Uh, high demand, we've got that floor production. Yeah, we need to get the, get the stuff out there, don't we? The more that we can produce, as long as there's demand for it, we can continue um, producing it. Uh, what about a new motorway? Well, we're going to have to go with job production, aren't we? Because it is, it's a one-off thing. It's going to be completely customised to whatever it, it needs for the situation. We can't customise, uh, we can't do floor production of, of motorways because each motorway is going to be specific to that situation and things like that. Um, Crayola, we're going to have batch. Why? Well, because we're going to need a certain type of, um, you know, pink ones. We're going to need a certain type of... Uh, blue Crayola crayons, uh, a certain amount of brown ones, whatever it is. And um, there's no point in doing the other ones, no point in doing job production, a customized Crayola crayon. And we're not going to be doing flow production because we're not just going to keep outputting the same color um crayola crayon it doesn't seem to make any sense what about mclaren uh, sorry coca-cola we've got floor production it seems pretty obvious doesn't it really really mass market able to just uh, standardize the product and get it out uh, mclaren cars we've got job production yeah very very customized very very specific very very niche so there's no point in doing the other ones because we're just not going to sell them even if we did them in batches it would actually take away from the um the ability for us to sell that product to our market if we just say oh yeah well uh, not only you can have this but a a range of people can have it no people who are buying mclaren cars want a very specific want to feel special want to be niche are willing to pay you know 300 400 thousand pound for a car wedding cake job production no point of uh, making loads of standardized wedding cakes because people want their own customized thing don't they so you're always going to make that custom to the specific situation we've got clothes batch uh, why do we bother we doing this the main reason we do this is because of um, not only because of demand but um, seasonality and, and things like that to to our uh, our products as well. There's no point of producing loads and loads and loads of scarves if we know that scarves are only going to be bought at certain times of the year, um, you know, or hats or gloves or bikinis or whatever it is. Um, you know, there is only a certain amount that we're going to sell at certain times of the year, isn't there? Walker's Chris, floor, we know we're going to sell them all year round. No seasonality really to those. Um, and we know that we're going to be able to, you know, standardize those and sell them. You know, there is a, a definitely a enough of a demand in that market for them and finally uh, is it Tyrrell's crisps uh, batch because of the um they have quite a niche that they're going for then they're, they're a lot more niche than walker's crisps um and they make them in batches because the the uh, they'll probably be the reason that they'll make them in batches is probably because they've niche market uh, but also they'll have one standardized set of uh of machinery that they'll use for everything so um walkers they just won't be able to compete with walkers in terms of the um, capital intensive nature of the product they won't have the ability to um like um they won't have the money to be able to invest in the machinery to be able to outplow 
uh, output the same as walkers. Whether they'd want to or not is also up for uh, demand, isn't it? Up, sorry, up for a question. So finally, uh, the same method could be used in any uh, production method. So, sorry, the same product that could be used made uh, made by any production method, essentially, couldn't it? Um, within reason. So the following factors need to be considered when a firm decides uh, what product method to use for each justify why. So the demand for a product, remember, the um, whether we're doing job, batch or floor, will we'll come down to this, won't it? So the demand for the product, is it going to be a very, very specific product? Is it going to be a very, very customized product? What is it that we're physically doing? Um, and also the demand, remember, demand is all about the willingness and ableness to purchase this product. Is there a hell of a lot of demand for it? Is there only a very, very small amount of demand for it? Um, there could be a very, very small amount of demand for it, but the people who do demand it are willing to pay a massive premium for it, like Morgan Cars, like McLaren. Uh, the capital available. So, how much money is actually available to you? Uh, are you a, a, actually able to do it? You might have a brilliant thing. If you if you want to know about you know um, capital, cash flow, and things, go and have a look at um, you know my Mario video about uh, cash flow because you might be able to set up a, a really good company with loads and loads of stuff. Invest all your money into capital intensive stuff to be able to flow produce, but then very very quickly realize you've no money left. So if you've got uh, if you're a massive company, you might be able to use floor production. But for the smaller companies, you're not you're not physically going to have the money to be able to do that. Uh, customer requirements, we might just not need it. If we need something something very specific, they're going to change a lot. Then we're going to have to do job and batch. There's no benefit to doing floor production. Output required. How much are we doing? Can we get those economies of scale in? Are we going to need a hundred thousand bottles? Are we going to need a million bottles? Whatever it is. Motivation of employees is a big one, isn't it? So have we got the employees on board? Uh, if we have got the employees on board, there's no reason why we can't, you know, do job, um, job and flow. Uh, sorry, job and batch. Remember, you're always going to have a struggle with maintaining that um, motivation in people. The the less skilled it gets, the more, you know, essentially replaceable and and boring it's going to be. Uh, for those people trying to to do those things so and finally technology uh, how much technology do we have available how much changing technology is are, are we available uh, sorry are we able to sort of replace people with that um you know and things like that okay final one uh, we've got past paper question for today discuss the view that manufacturers such as iceland foods will benefit will always benefit from the introduction and use of flow production so I'm not going to go through, you know, word for word what this is, but if we think about this, we've got an eight product, we've got an eight market. Let's have a look at the AOs for it. Okay, so discuss. What is discuss? We know it's AO four, don't we? Because discuss must be, you know, essentially we have um, two different viewpoints here. Discuss the view that manufacturers such as Iceland. Now with this one, although we may have some AO two in here, uh, we don't necessarily have AO two because it's such as Iceland. We don't have to talk about Iceland. In this one because it's a such as and remember with the welsh board they're a bit funny about the such as thing so view that manufacturers such as iceland will always benefit from the production and use of floor production basically all this is asking you to do is give the benefits and disadvantages in floor production and and, and apply them to a um two situations basically so give me an example when all manufacturers remember it's talking about that manufacturers will always benefit from it well that's not true is it so we've got to go in with the Oh, well, let's start with, yes, the argument is that uh, that manufacturers will always benefit from floor production because um, cheaper unit cost overall, uh, economies of scale that you're able to do, your output's greater, um, you know, less uh, per people involved, so therefore you can maintain consistency and quality. Uh, then we'd be looking at the negatives. They're not always going to benefit from it. People like Iceland because there will be a seasonality to the products. Um there will be a there will be an amount of money that uh, you know someone like this might might struggle to be able to produce on that scale. Um, if you are doing sort of goods which is quite consistent, like Iceland is an example of a company that make the same product again and again and again. If they're making um, you know. Uh, microwave meals then that would probably work on floor production in which case yes i think it would be fine but if if it if it was um a company that's making a hell of a lot of different things like iceland do make a lot of different things floor production probably isn't going to be usable for them they're better doing it in batches because they're only going to have cer a certain amount of capacity and a certain amount of access to machinery excuse me conclusion um i would have been talking about something like just come down the side of one of them and just describe whether you think it is true. I think in this case, I don't think it, they're not always going to know. Big companies can, uh, but I think the average small company can't really benefit from it because they're not going to have the 
capital intensive it's very capital intensive and they're not going to have the money or the the ability or the size to be able to really benefit from it okay so um as long as you're coming out with something like that so just as i said the aors we've got ao4 definitely haven't we we've got um ao1 because we've got the floor production things i'd say uh, eight marks ao1 ao3 ao4 for this one no no application marks you could potentially have two 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 potentially but in terms of this you're going to be doing the same thing as well remember with your application marks don't be frightened of putting examples in you know shoot for a or four you need to be putting it in context anyway so give me an example you know use iceland if you want you might not get any specific specific marks for specifically talking about iceland but it can really help with your a or four of talking about well if you've got a, co a company that has seasonal products or if you've got a company that is new or a well-established company such as iceland blah 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 can you see you're already talking about the a or four things that you need to talk about which is the size of the company the you know the um length of time the company's been open the amount of customer loyalty that that's got or whatever okay so ladies and gents we are um you know in a good position there i'm happy with that uh, i'm just sorry that it hasn't been live today for you because uh, i know everyone's uh, obsessed with seeing me live and they, you know they don't want to miss anything <laughs> um but we are still uh, able to do what we can do which is good and uh, sometimes these things happen these things are set to try us so we're going to have a look at the news let's have a little look at the news so um virus uh, is that right yeah i think so yeah it is so let's have a look so we're going to reset we're going to uh, we're going to refresh to see what the newest news is right this second right okay um Prince Louis Rainbow Tribute. Right. Hmm. B and Q reopens. B and Q has reopened dozens of UK stores as lockdown measures remain in place. As after a trial period, sixty-one shops, including those in Cardiff, Manchester, and Aberdeen, have been allowed to reopen. The DIY group said it's brought in social distancing control, such as capping the number of customers in store. On Thursday, the other UK firms, such as Aston Martin and Taylor Wimpy, said they would return to work in May. Interesting, Taylor Wimpy. Um, didn't realise that. Uh, B&Q had been closed since the end of March when the government introduced lockdown. However, hardware stores were included in the government's list of essential retailers that were allowed to open under trade, under restrictions. He says the DIY chain said that on saturday that 14 of its stores would reopen followed by another 61 sites around uh, announced on wednesday customers have been able to place orders online and collect goods from the shop the newly reopened stores perfect per perspex screens will be fitted to checkouts and two meter floor markers will indicate the social distance um, shoppers should maintain for each other mm. uk manufacturers and house builders announced the plans on Thursday to kickstart production during the lockdown. Luxury car maker Aston Martin said it would reopen its St. Athan uh, plant on the 5th of May after it's temporarily suspended all manufacturing operations in the UK at the end of March. T House builder Taylor Wimpy also said it's plans to restart work on most of its building sites across England in May. In May its staff will follow th new safety guidelines while subcontractor work will resume the following week. Says Peter Redfern, Taylor Wimpy's chief executive, said in a period while our sites have been closed, trading has been inevitably um been impacted however we're still seeing continued demand for our homes and our sales team have been selling homes remotely and digitally week to week he added that the firm's show homes and centers would remain closed most likely until social distancing measures have relaxed it's an interesting one this isn't it it's the difficulty of look social uh, external impact um external sort of factors and if we were to look at this from job flow and you know if we look at it from a production perspective, that is a very, um, you know, floor production, isn't it? You know, intentionally, they're going to be, it's going to be floor production for B&Q because the amount of stuff they're producing, probably, uh, if not batch production, but probably moving towards floor production of the stuff of the nails and stuff that they're producing. But these, the Taylor Wimpy stuff is definitely going to be batches or, or job production, isn't it? It's customised stuff. Um, so they will make stuff to, um, you know be specific to the customer's needs and things like that as a house builder i think that the more batch production i don't think they do completely customized stuff but even so you can see um that it says here drivers are being ripped off for petrol 
Uh, motorists are being ripped off by petrol companies, the AAA has claimed, as the falling oil prices are not being reflected at the pump. The motoring group calculates drivers have been overcharged by more than a five or a tank. Questions will be asked about the fairness of pump prices during the great oil crash of 2020. He says, um, the, the, the chairman of the Petrol Retail Association told the BBC that independent retailers are struggling to survive. The price of oil has crashed in recent days, leaving the wholesale price of petrol bobbing at about the 16p a litre mark. Uh, but the average pump price of unleaded has remained about one pound ten, inching uh, only slightly below that this week. While the bulk price is made up of tax, the AA reckons that the average pump prices should be about a pound. Each litre sold should be a uh, fuel duty of fifty seven point nine five p a litre, and the retailer's margin plus VAT. Um, so with that, that's an important one, isn't it? Because that is essentially going to going to completely you know affect our ability to create remember in production we said it was all to do with um our costs and things like that as well and this is going to massively impact it remember our fuel uh, access to fuel and things is always going to be massively impacted um the amount of stuff that we spend on fuel means that there is a uh, you know it's going to increase our cost and if we increase our cost then we're going to have to uh, you know pass that on to a consumer or take a hit on our profit margin aren't we okay last one for today what have we got Let's see. This one's about companies that are changing over. It says a, a restaurant kitchen is completely different than a production kitchen. We've never delivered a, a unit of food. Uh, his firm now completes about 400 online orders in one weekend. Andre is just one business owner who is totally un unprepared operations. Sorry, upended operations because of the coronavirus lockdown he owns a, a chain of six restaurants focusing on food from sustainable sources uh it became very clear that we should close sooner rather than later but because we have a slightly older generation that eat with us we thought we should be very do very good that we could deliver the food and this is yeah it's a good point um businesses are having to change aren't they and having to be um having to have this ability the interesting thing i think for this though as if we just sort of bring it to an end for today um is how will the world be on the other side of this how will people respond to this now that people have had to use the technology because i, I it really frustrates me that people are so anti oh i'm a technophobe well, i can't use computers oh i'm an idiot me <laughs> yeah well you are an idiot yeah and you shouldn't be proud if you can't use computers because we're in 2020 and you need to you know using oh yeah well i can i can put something on instagram oh yeah well uh, uh I, I don't know how to send an email well you need to get you need to get off your ass and do something don't you because these are skills that uh, kids are coming through from school who aren't able to use computers which is insane because you've got an older generation who thinks the younger generation are really tech savvy and the younger generation who are just lazy and who've never bothered because they can just press a button on the phone and and then apple do it so we've got a real issue with uh you know a skills gap here isn't it oh well if you know how to use computers you must be a techie person well not really i, I think it's a, a necessity for most people to understand how to use it now um so i think that this 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 pandemic thing the people that understand about you know video calling and that and we've always known about video calling to an extent but it's forced people to change the ways things which would never have done people have, who've got access to internet which would have never have had access to internet um you know older people which are accessing technology which they never would but if that's you if you're one of these people who, who, who gloat about the fact that you're you're an idiot and don't know how to use technology um do not gloat about it it's not something to be proud of that not being able to use a you know a computer confidently go and learn how to use it you're going to need it um and and uh, it can save you money it can save you time if you're a business owner then you need to be able to use it confidently and things like that but it really frustrates me when people say it as kind of like a badge of honor yeah oh i'm an idiot me i don't know how to use a computer oh no don't give me a computer no ha 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 like it's a joke like it's funny like it's like you should be proud of your inability to use very very simple software maybe i'm being unreasonable with people but it does it does really get up my nose but anyway we're going to hold it there for today i hope it's been useful for you i will see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow hopefully the stream will be back on as usual uh, thank you very much for joining me stay safe stay well peace